1973, it was very different. First of all, there was probably literally less than a handful of practitioners. No one had what I would call an immigration firm. But when I started my own practice in 73 with Harry Tyndall, by then I realized that immigration would give me the opportunity to do what I really always thought I would do, to interface with an international clientele. Because by definition, every client was going to be a foreign national. I never specialized in any particular area of law, immigration law, uh, for two reasons. Initially, because any immigration business was better than anything else. So I took in anything that related to immigration. But also, for another very basic reason, as I've told attorneys year in, year out in this firm, we want to do everything because your immigration clients do not come in neat packages. Your, your corporate client that you're qualifying to on an employment base issue can have an issue that could make that person subject to detention. I think to be uh, a good immigration lawyer, uh, and to be well-rounded, you've got to have experience in every aspect. And along those lines, I believed in that message so much that I initiated and developed board certification standards for immigration and nationality law lawyers. And that never existed before. The firm grew and became the largest immigration firm in Houston and in the state of Texas for several reasons. A key piece of legislation, Lyndon Johnson, who I technically work for, passed and signed the 65 Immigration Act. But the key provisions went into effect in 68. What did the 65 Act do? It opened the world up for, to legal immigration. When the law changed, all of a sudden, there was gonna be a whole new body of individuals trying to immigrate to the United States. So as this global economy grew, all of a sudden, they, these big firms, they, they weren't touching immigration. They didn't understand it, but they knew that I did, and so I was referred. I, I was the go-to attorney uh, to have these corporate clients referred to me when they began to, to do what? To expand internationally? I had the opportunity early on uh, to, to change the practice of immigration law. So you had to be a member of, of the Association of Immigration and Nationality Lawyers, which was essentially a New York organization. One day I became president, changed the name to the American Immigration Lawyers Association. We grew that organization from a little, from a New York-centric into a, really a dynamic national organization. The second thing that I'm proudest of when I was recommended by the University of Texas School of Law to a young super, who would become a superstar ballet dancer from China who had been sent here as part of the very first cultural exchange between the People's Republic of China and Houston to represent him when he decided he wanted to stay. I'm here to make sure he gets to do what he wants to do and obviously got him released. So that would be a highlight, only because that's what I call immigration magic. Uh, and people still call me from all over the world thinking I can do immigration magic for them. The other thing that I was proud of is 86, I was asked by Governor uh, Mark White to be chair of a, a Texas task force on immigration so that te Texas would have a uh, input into what was being debated in Congress, a uh, big broad-based comprehensive immigration reform. I don't think uh, uh, you'll find anyone that, uh, that has actually given a speech to uh, 25 members of Congress, which I did on immigration policy. The first time I, I ever worked for a president, or I would say a would-be president, was George W. Bush, governor of Texas. But when I worked for these various presidential candidates, it was like a doctor selling good medicine. I, what I said and advised, would have, it made me no different who that candidate was, I was selling the same policy that came to be known as comprehensive immigration reform that I started working on in the very first days when uh, then Governor Bush asked me to advise him and he told me he wanted a grand bargain with Mexico. What I advocated is a uh, legalization program combined with a viable, workable, temporary workers program, more visa numbers for highly skilled professionals, more effective uh, barter enforcement using more technology, 
than 18th or 10th century technology like a, a big wall. The biggest success of the firms is, is just continuity that uh, uh, very few firms, for one reason or another, uh, they don't last, they break up. The vision for the firm's future is what it's always been, a, a diverse firm in terms of practice, in terms of personnel. We hire highly motivated people, hopefully they share my vision about how privileged it is to to be able to represent international clients from all over the world with interesting stories, with interesting problems. In immigration, it's always a win-win, positive thing. My biggest legacy, and I've thought about that, is for the firm to survive. I think uh, I, I would like for uh, the firm to keep on going, getting bigger and better in, in every way.